Welcome to Chooks Outdoor Adventures. Camping way up in the interior, and this is what it has all been about. I know I enjoyed the overland, but my secret agenda for overlanding in the Toyota and the iCamper was to hunt. I wanted to be comfortable for once. Usually I'm just out here in a little tent that I have to take down and take apart and set up and put a sleeping mat down, and it's usually not that comfortable. Now I'm I feel like I'm living in style up here. I mean, I'm on six inches of memory foam on an elevated platform with a down comforter, but uh, I'm up here hunting the 40 mile herd. This is the first time I've been here. Usually I go to the Denali Highway to hunt. Um, so I had some tips from a friend um, and then some really nice people up here from Maine uh, telling me where to go so I, I'm feeling really confident as long as the the caribou are still in the area in the central area I'm gonna get one tomorrow for sure at least by the next day but I've got a few days up here so I started off um, and I got this bino harness I'll show later but I also met up finally with the guy from AK gun guard and he met me in Fairbanks just as a real quick I stopped off and got some supplies met him at Home Depot I bought a AK gun guard from him that, because it's wet out here. It's It's been a rainstorm. Um, so now I'm keeping my scope and the, the action on my rifle dry. Really excited to test that out. Um, and I wasn't sure where I was gonna go. There's a, a, it's pretty dangerous up here. It's like the Wild West, literally. Worse than the Denali Highway. There's people just shooting in all directions. It suggested you wear Hunter Orange if you're not on a four-wheeler. So I'm, I'm definitely gonna be wearing Hunter Orange part of the time. I'm not getting up till five. So you can shoot at midnight and there's people riding way out, you know, 30 miles on their three-wheelers, four-wheelers uh, to hunt. But so I will get up at five, pack up, head out. Don't have a four-wheeler, but um, I actually could take this truck pretty far in but I'm not going to risk getting stuck and I don't want to get in the way of four wheelers and stuff but if it was drier I would really consider that if I had a winch for sure but really comfortable I, I love these O bulbs uh, a lot of fun and uh, yeah I, I just got camping dialed down from living in a uh, I'll do a video about that living in the truck tent this summer everything's dialed down I got a bunch of food so see what happens and I'm gonna get on some caribou tomorrow. Yes. Yes. Oh my God. Finally caught a break.
All right, well, there you have it. Got my caribou. Um, I saw some huge bulls. This is just a medium sized cow. It's a young cow, but I don't care. I didn't get a caribou last year. I didn't want to come out here and get skunked. This is going to be a decent amount of meat to add to the halibut I already got. So I'm happy. Um, plus I got a long way to go. Well, I got a mile to get back to the truck, but it's through a uh, pretty steep downhill. So originally I, I talked to a lot of guys. Most of them had four wheelers. Some of them were hiking, but they were on the other side of this valley just watching the caribou and uh, they, you know, hoping one would come close so they could shoot him. There were some guys way up top that were shooting. They wouldn't let any caribou come through the valley. They would just scare them off. It was frustrating. So I got up at 5 a.m., sat up there for a few hours. I kept seeing big groups over here, but nobody was willing to hike down the valley and cross the stream and come up here. Um, so finally I had some lunch. I went poop on the mountain. And for some reason, once you, once you go poop in nature like that, then you're acclimated, acclimated to nature. Then I was ready to go. I was like, screw these guys. I'm just going to go up there. So I went up there. The, the fog hit in. The fog came in. And I knew I was getting close, but I couldn't see him. You could only see 50 feet in front of you. But I heard him. You, a distinctive sound of a caribou grunting. So I dropped the pack, got everything ready, just grabbed the rifle, started sneaking. And then I saw this group of caribou just appear out of the mist and they were like 50 feet away or something ridiculous. It was like 40 yard shot. Uh, I think the first shot was either the shoulder or the neck. Um, the first shot was the neck shot. It was kind of straight on and it was kind of flopping around a little. So I took one more shot to put it down, but really happy. It's about 4 PM up here in the mountains and I still got to get it down. I don't know if I'm going to get everything down. I may just take a trip or two tomorrow, but I, I may go take a couple trips and get it all to the truck tonight. That way I could just drive to Anchorage tomorrow. It's like a eight, nine hour drive. It was all day, but uh, pretty interesting. So uh, I'll have more footage, but really happy with the, uh, the tactical Remington 700. This thing's a beast. Um, I really like that the, the Mark IV is a fixed 10X, so you could bump it around a little bit. It's not going to lose zero like some of those variable scopes. So I got it all Chris Kyled out with my replica style. Super comfortable to shoot. A little on the heavy side, but I don't mind. I got, a, got some decent gear. So, all right, I got to get going here and start butchering or uh, I'm not going to get back till dark. All right, guys. already got mine. You guys got nothing to worry about. I'm cool. There you go. Where were you earlier when I needed you? Always curious. Of course, the big herd shows up after I get my small caribou. Cray cray. Gorillas in the mist. Boo. Ah, oh God, how many of you are there? All right, I, I can't deal with this anymore. I'm leaving. Laters. It's 1022 uh, Tuesday night, opening day. I got my caribou back in the uh, truck tent and whoever said hunting is fun uh, was lying because if you pack out your own meat, it's miserable. Especially, uh, I was having some dark thoughts thinking that I'm not gonna make it out to get the rest of my meat. I only took one of my meat bags down. My gear was so heavy and that rifle was so heavy. 
So I'm going up in the morning, uh, but I feel good now. I made it to the truck and got out clean clothes. I ran the heater and the cab for an hour and dried off my Sitka gear and boots and everything. So I'll be fine. Uh, it's going to be even more wet tomorrow, though. So today was supposed to be showers and the afternoon it was just a downpour. So it'll probably be worse tomorrow, but um, I think I found a better way to get up to the top of that ridge and it's still going to be miserable but at least i'll won't have a heavy rifle with me i'll just go up get the meat come down hopefully do it in one trip and just get out of here i'm glad i didn't pack up the truck tent this morning i was thinking about it but i would have been miserable tired and having to do that so i'll pack it up in the morning and then i'll go get the rest of the meat and right now i'm just gonna pass out so all right check in with you tomorrow Right, here's the meat, right where I left it. Had a, a quick brunch and get it packed up and go back down the mountain. I might get back to Anchorage by oh, midnight, one o'clock if I'm lucky. It's nice not to be rained on, but I, this wind and the clouds, it could change at any time. Uh, saw a couple caribou already. It's beautiful up here though. Yes, thank God. Finally. Oh. hunt. I did the Steez Highway registration caribou hunt. It's the day after opening and I'm heading home with meat. Didn't get the big trophy ball uh, but that's okay. It was hard enough just packing that cow off the mountain and I'm coming home with meat and that's the whole point. So I'm really happy about that. As far as my gear, I'm really going to have to take a look at the gear I have. I burnt my legs out because everything was too heavy. The, those uh, Forge, Bushnell Forge binoculars are just ridiculous. They're 12 by 56. Huge monster binoculars. They were really nice to spot animals with, but that's way too heavy for a high cow hunt like that. Just ridiculous. I need to get, just invest in a nice pair of small Swarovski hunting binoculars that I can keep on me. That would have taken some weight off um, I didn't need all that ammo. I always end up bringing like 25 rounds of rifle ammo on me. That weighs me down. Meanwhile, I take one or two shots. That's ridiculous. So I need to cut down the amount of ammo I hike out with. Um, the Zamberlin boots were nice. I, I was lucky I didn't get rained on, but I used to complain about them and say I was just going to wear my Merrells with some gaiters, but... You really need the ankle protection. There was a couple times that if I would have been just wearing my dinky little high top hiking boots, I would have really messed my ankle up when my foot went to the side. But those, those Zamberlin hiking hunting boots are so stiff that it protects your ankle. And I was, every step on the way down from that mountain, I was thinking about, I wasn't locking my legs out or anything because you cannot afford to roll an ankle or snap something up there on the mountain with no cell service. I really need to get an in-reach deal too, but uh, <laughs> you gotta be careful. So I was thinking about every step I took, um, but those Zamberlin boots mixed with the Sitka Gators 
are amazing because it's basically like a muck boot. As long as you are going pretty fast, you can wade through small streams and stay dry. The water doesn't have time to seep in your boots. They're waterproof boots and you got that gator. It does the same thing as muck boots almost and they're not uncomfortable. You actually have like a technical hiking boot with a shank. Um, so that that's just ingenious. I'm going to continue doing that. I was complaining about the Zamberlin because they are on the heavy side and that tends to give me some low back pain a little bit just because you're they're so freaking heavy and you're raising your foot every time but I'm sure I could find some mountaineering boots that are lightweight so someday I may do that but those Zamberlins are really tough. Um, I also enjoyed the, the gun guard AK gun guard, kept my rifle dry. Once I started bushwhacking through wet foliage though and it rained really hard, nothing stayed dry. Still disappointed by my Sitka gear Gore-Tex rainwear or whatever. It, in that light rain when I was walking on top of the mountain, oh yeah, you stay bone dry. It's amazing. But once you start going through brush, brush and it's raining heavy, I think the the combination of the heavy rain and also leaves brushing against your arms, it just pushes the water in. So I got pretty soaked, even though I was wearing $1,200 worth of Sitka gear. It's just infuriating. But sometimes you just can't, there's nothing you can do about it unless you want to carry heavy, you know, Heli Hansen rain gear out there with you that commercial fishermen use, but then you're going to sweat in it too. So. The good thing is, is the sick gear completely dried out in an hour with the truck heater. So that was nice. And that brings me to the truck tent. That was so cool to talk to other people about their overland rigs. There was lots of guys with Jeeps and Toyotas. There was a lot of FJ cruisers with overland trailers. I talked to a few guys and they, I'm not the only one. Overlanding is perfect. Overlander rigs are perfect for hunting in Alaska. There was other guys with setups too, and it's just comfortable. It was so nice to be able to come down off that mountain after hunting, whatever, 15 hours, and just crawl up into the truck tent and pass out on all that memory, memory foam and my comforter and everything. So comfortable. So that's it's been a success. That's what I wanted, and just having that Overland rig for hunting I could have gone up the trail. It was a Jeep trail. Um, it was pretty muddy, but and then it turned to just rock. But if I had wanted to, I could have driven, you know, five, 10 miles. There was Jeeps doing it, either even normal SUVs, but without a winch, I didn't want to risk it. Plus I didn't want to get in the way of all the four wheelers. They were just zipping up and down that thing the whole time. But something to think about for the future once I get a winch and a few more attributes to this Toyota, I can take it up certain trails. So I'm excited about that. So it's a win-win having an overland rig and being able to hunt and be comfortable. It's a great trip. Uh, I got this. I thought this was the only one, but there's a whole bunch of these Sunrise Bakery coffee stands in Fairbanks. And they'll make you a bagel cheeseburger really good coffee so that was cool went through Fairbanks but now I'm heading back to Anchorage I don't know if I'll do this registration hunt next year I may I'll definitely do it another time but it's pretty cool to see a new area I saw some of the biggest bulls I've ever seen in my life but glad I didn't get one because that was pretty rough coming down the mountain so thanks for tagging along I finally have an outdoor adventure to share and keep tuning in. All right, thanks guys. My name is Jude. I like to trade my guns just for fun, but now I have none. Oh, look at Chuck my bear, but I don't care, I got a 10 millimeter. Shoot out adventures. Why don't you almost die every time?